Eden. Um, so what have we got? Male fatality. Hmm? Teenage lad. Oh. Stabbed sometime late last night. Got any ID? Uh, nothing so far. No wallet, no phone. Pockets were empty. What about CCTV? Apparently, all the cameras are on the blink. Oh, right, would be, wouldn't they? Mum, I've just spoken to the yard owner, Gary Minchin. He said he locked up last night, left around 9.15. Yeah, well, I'll need to talk to him soon enough. Get statements from that lot. Mum. Morning, Malcolm. So what can you tell us? Single stab wounds to the lower abdomen from the look of all this blood. Probably sliced through an artery. I say he was stabbed behind that boat over there. Manages to crawl. Ends up dead where we found him. Shoe tread here. Probably the victim's own trainers. There's blood all over the soles. They look brand new. And there's some bling here. Where's he getting money for that? I'll leave that one for you to work out, shall I? Murder weapon? Well, be easy to miss in all this junk. I'll do a full sweep of the yard just as soon as you get out from under our feet. Well, we'll try not to cramp your style, love. Thank you. So how'd the lad get in here if it's all locked up? Didn't swim here. Hole in the fence. Ground's been well trodden. There's some fibres snagged here. Yeah, it could have been anyone's. Now, the wire's bent inwards, so that's caught the clothes of someone stepping out. That rules out our mystery lad. He's not going anywhere, so what? In a hurry? Careless? Or nothing at all? Get forensics moved over here. The local officer was below Mr. Minchin? DCI, stand up. Now, I take it this is your yard? Aye, that's right. And you were the last to leave last night? Keel repair. All I needed his boat back out, I'd say. Did you see anyone else when you left, hanging around outside? Not that I remember. And is there any recent trouble we should know about? Mm, trespassing, break-ins? Local kids sometimes climb through the fence. Mm, I want to get those cameras fixed. Never seem to get round to it. <laughs> now, I'm going to need a list of all your employees, customers, boat owners, anyone who has access to the yard. That'll all be in the office. I'd better go see to it, then. Who was it found the body? Uh, local copper, uh, PC Tunley. That police were called out on a suspected breaking. Uh, PC Tunley, isn't it? Uh, totally, ma'am. Sean. Now, DC Lockhart tells me it was you found the body. No, a uh, routine call out, end of shift. Oh, he's not from around here. Well, you seem very sure of that. Well, I've placed this town for years. I know most of the local kids. And they all meet up in the yard, do they, these local kids? That hole in the fence? They know it's somewhere they'll not be disturbed. I mean, they can pass a bottle around, smoke a bit of weed. Yeah. Well, there's never been any trouble, I mean... ..not like this. Who was it from, the police? Roy Brewer. Bit of a nuisance. Why'd you say that? He calls us out twice a week. He set himself up as a neighbourhood watch. Now, well, give us ten minutes, I'll get you logged out. We go talk to him together. Mm. <laughs> Told the police you saw someone acting suspiciously. I was walking the dog, clocked him loitering around the gate. The place was deserted. And what time was this? Must have been about ten. Uh, the uh, call was logged at uh, ten fifteen. Well, I took a few photos with my mobile. Oh well, let's have a look. 
That's a fella. Jeans and a paddy jacket. That could be anyone. Can we take this with us? Yeah. Thanks, Sophie. You've been a great help. All town's gone to the dogs. Mm? I mean, they've even broken in here. When was this? It must have been about, what, six weeks ago? Came down to find the door kicked in. Not that the police did anything. We followed it up. Anything taken? The till was empty, but I still had to replace all the locks. Oh, well. Well, we know where you are, love, if anything else should crop up. It's not the last thing her dad needs. Who? Kaylee. She's Gary Minson's lass. Turns up from work whenever she feels like it. Right, we'll have a word. Thanks. Have you got a minute, love? Kaylee, isn't it? Got my wages if I'm not careful. Ah, you're all right, pet. You been working here long, then? A few months now. Hey, that must have been a shock for your dad, finding that lad in his yard. I suppose I missed have, yeah. But you didn't see him this morning, then? Oh, I haven't lived on home for a while, so... Ah, well, you ought to give him a ring, love. Mm. I haven't had the chance. Late night, was it? Bit of a party down at the beach. Ooh. Came straight in to do the breakfasts. I'd better get these washed. Ah, you're all right, lass. Oh, witness, Roy Brewer, his beef with the police. Is that something we should know about? Oh, a lad had been giving him some lip. Roy gave him a clip for his trouble. He's lucky he got off with a caution. Oh, right. Well, you better get off. Write up your notes. Ma'am? Mm. Police find her body in her dad's yard, and she doesn't even call a check-in. Uh, teenagers. She's probably busy. You'd find time, wouldn't you? Something like that. Kenny. Uh, we've got the deceased on camera, ma'am. He arrived in Peyton uh, yesterday at uh, 16.46. Travelled alone. 16.46? Yes. Uh, that would put him on the train out in Newcastle. Good work, Kenny. We'll see you back at the station for a briefing. Will do, ma'am. Took the train out of Newcastle yesterday afternoon. What's he doing in painting? Well, he wasn't building sandcastles, I know that much. The teenage lad fatally stabbed in Mincham's boatyard last night between the hours of 9.15 and 10.30. Now, he catches the train from Newcastle up to Peyton, and a few hours later, he's murdered. Uh, we've run the victim's prints, Mom. Uh, no record. Uh, still no idea who he is. So what do we have? A witness calls the police, reports someone acting suspiciously outside the boatyard. Now, this is Roy Brewer, who works in the cafe down on the prom, fancies himself as a neighborhood watch. Took some snaps on his mobile. Tech, they're still trying to enhance them. Yeah, let's have a look. Well, that could be our victim. Or the killer. Could be keeping a lookout. Could be unrelated. I've had some intel back from Miss Purr's mom. Male juveniles currently missing in Newcastle. Oh, all just kids. Six of them. Mom? Here's our lad. That's him. Caden Lennon, reported missing from care home six weeks ago. Caden had lived here since he was 11. Been in care half his life. What about his parents? Mum's dead. Dad walked out when he was still a bairn. Now, you reported Caden missing six weeks ago. He started staying out late. Sometimes he wouldn't come home at all. He'd always answer my text eventually, just to let us know he was safe. The day he disappeared, his phone died. No word since, nothing. Do you have any other kind of trouble with him? You're right, love. Caden hated being in care. 
The stigma, the rules. That pretty weird odds did it. We talked about a pathway plan to smooth his way for turning 18. Then he tells us he's got himself a job. Oh, where was this? Ferry Cross Estate. He grew up there. Well, I know it. Then you'll know it's not a place for an impressionable teenager. So this job, who's he working for? A fellow called Dave Miller runs the community centre. You don't sound too impressed. I just don't like his attitude. Filling Caden's head with ideas. Have you spoken to this Dave since the lad went missing? He told us Caden had packed it all in. Hadn't seen him since. And when was this? Just before he went missing. It doesn't make sense. He'd never have abandoned Tyler. Who's Tyler? Oh, his brother. Sorry, I thought you knew. The pair of them shared a room. The police liaison officer called round this morning. I woke him to tell him the news. He hasn't left his room since. Tyler. Police are here. Well, they need to ask you some questions. And you hadn't been in touch with your brother since he left. I think he lost his phone. The social services applied for a tracking order. It was switched off. So you've no idea why he was up in Peyton? We used to go there on day trips. With their mum? She always liked it by the sea. Did Caden have friends there? I don't know. Now, I need to ask you this, love. Was your brother involved in any criminal activity? No. Now, we know he got a job over on the Ferry Cross Estate. Can you think of anyone he might have fallen out with? Caden might have had some issues, but he was a good lad. Right, well, we'll need to go through some of his things. I don't want them touched. They just need to find out what happened. It was your fault he left! You were always on it, him! Should be some clothes in the wardrobe and boxes under the bed. Well managed, love. If Caden was homeless, sleeping rough, might explain why no one missed him. New trainers, gold chain, doesn't fit. See if you can find anything here we can work with. I thought you might need a photo. His 16th birthday. We baked him a cake. Tyler worshipped his brother. He fell apart when he left. He's grieving, love. He didn't mean those things he said. I feel like I've failed them both. Yeah, he showed up here one morning. Said he was looking for work. Yeah, so what did this job entail? General dog's body, really. We get funding for a couple of employment schemes. Well, we know he grew up on this estate. Yeah. I think he felt a connection. Only place he ever called home. He must be a line. I want to give the place a wide berth. Do you have a problem with gangs on this estate? Well, most of these kids have been written off. Gangs, drugs, knife crime. We do what we can to keep them out of trouble. Did Caden get involved in any of that? No, I warned him to stay out of it. Voice of experience. So he asks you for a job and he packs it in a couple of weeks later. There must have been a reason. He started turning up late for his shifts. Said he had better things to do. And you've no idea where he might have been this last six weeks? I only wish I could tell you. So what are we thinking? Gets into trouble with a gang. Leave us in a hurry, they found out where he was. Go after him. Uh, fits with a stabbing, doesn't it? Go away! Wouldn't harm to knock on some doors. Uh, no one's going to talk to us. Sent everyone into the cracks. Aiden? Get 
get under the gang's unit and the intel they can give us. We found traces of benzoyl lecanine in the victim's urine. It's crack cocaine. So if the lad was using, chances are his death was drugs related. Well, we did find sharps and baggies dumped on the wasteland behind the yard. He wasn't the only one getting high. Yeah, what about his injuries? The knife nicked the common hepatic artery. Extensive internal bleeding, heart rate spikes, blood pressure rises. Well, he would have bled out in minutes. You might want to take a look at his hands. No defence wounds. Exactly. Nothing to indicate you put up any kind of struggle. Well, that suggests he knew his killer. Indeed. Any other injuries I should know about? Hairline fracture on the radius of the right arm, yeah. Probably years old. What about those shoe treads we found at the scene? They were a match with the victim's trainers. He stabbed, staggers forward, steps into his own blood. So you've got nothing to help me find his killer? I did recover some fibres from inside the knife wound. They didn't match what he was wearing. If the weapon was concealed in the assailant's pocket. So the fibres could have transferred onto the blade. Polyester cotton mix. Matches the fibres that were snagged on the fence. Possibly the lining of a jacket. That's a good job I spotted those. Well, you got lucky. Ah, just caught you. <laughs> now, these kids who meet up in that boatyard, smoking a bit of weed, you said. Well, you're going to get that in any town. Caden Lennon had been using the night he died, crack cocaine. What's a new slant on things? Aye, doesn't it, just? Look, these past few months, we have been a bit stretched. Ah, yeah, this recent spike in crime. Robberies, shoplifting, a couple of violent assaults. Well, that's usually drugs in the mix. Yeah, people think it's all Z cars up here. A seaside plot with no idea. Yeah, working all hours. No support. It's easy to feel overwhelmed. You know, they've even closed down the front desk. So where was this lad getting the gear from? Right, let's do the rounds with the photo, see if anyone bites. A bit of covert surveillance. There's no law against it. You've been cautioned before about community policing. That lad you assaulted. I gave the boy a slap, that's all. There's plenty of say he deserved it. Ever seen this lad? Yeah, I've seen him a few times. Hanging around outside. You sure about that? I thought he might have been catching money. I've seen him. I heard the dead lad had been stabbed. Who told you that? Just talk at the club. Which club's this? The Yacht Club. Can I take that? Word of advice, Mr Brewer. Leave this to the police. How did he know the lad had been stabbed? It didn't come from us. Asking. DCI Stanhope, Northumberland and City Police. We're trying to trace the recent movements of this lad. No one I know. Now, are you sure about that? Face has been seen here several times. I might have seen him playing the machines. This place is a magnet for day trippers. Oh, aye. And we've reason to believe he was using drugs. 
And you think he bought them off me? I know you've got previous. Possession with intent to supply. I've put all that behind us. And you won't mind just talking to some of your punters. See if someone else can place him. Be my guest. I will also need access to your CCTV. Well, then you'll need to come back with a warrant. Ah, uh, no. That'd give you time to wipe the tapes, wouldn't it? This place is legit. I've got nothing to hide. And I suggest you wind your neck in and let us do our job. And I'll leave that one to DS Healy. The number on the card was uh, unobtainable. Page you go mobile. Oof, no surprise it's there then, Kenny. Tech had blown up those pictures from Roy Brea's mobile, ma'am. No hope of an ID. What's this transit van here parked on the road? Did Roy Brewer mention anything about that in his statement? Mark, see if you can get a fix on those plates. Um, vehicle's registered to Gary Minchin. Is it? Indeed. Is that gaffer about? Need another word? Yeah, I'm gonna go and check in with forensics. Last time I looked, he was in the office. Didn't catch your name. Alan. Alan White. You worked here long? A few years now. Gary took us on as an apprentice. Mm. Well, don't let me keep you. We've got an ID for the dead lad. I thought you'd like to know. Name of Caden Lennon. Doesn't mean anything to us. Been using drugs the day he was killed. Sounds like he was asking for trouble. And we know this yard is the meeting point for addicts. If I'd ever clocked drugs in this yard, I'd have... You'd what, love? I'd have put a stop to it. Now, you told us you're locked up at 9.15, night of the murder. All right, that's right. So how come your transit's still parked outside at 10? I walked home. I needed to clear my head. Any particular reason? Bailiffs delivered a summons that morning. Unpaid debts. I was working out a way to break it other wife. Oh, yeah, well, we know you owe the bank thousands. <laughs> Been checking up on us. A body was found here, love. We do the same with anyone. So how is business? Not much call for work and boats anymore. We were getting by, repairs and maintenance, yachts in the marina, and then someone started undercutting us. We get a job lined up, customer would pull out without warning. Orders dried up overnight. A few more weeks, I'd have found the money. 
and then this had to happen. Well, we'll be out of here soon enough. Now, can anyone verify what time you got home that night? You know your daughter's not living with you. You've been speaking to Kayleigh? Ah, uh, we ran into her down at the, the cafe. She moved out a couple of months ago. Bridie can vouch for us. My wife. She was putting the youngest to bed. Some intel's just come through. Well, there's recent crimes in the Peyton area. Yeah, go on, I'm listening. Well, there's also a theft at the yacht club three weeks ago. At the yacht club? Mm hmm That's Roy Brewer's water and hole, isn't it? Yeah, the manager's car was broken into. Nita Dejani, and she gave a description to the police of the suspect. Male, late teens, early 20s. Well, let's see what else she can tell us. The car alarm went off when I was cashing up. By the time I got out there, he was running away. But you did give the police a description. Was this the lad? He was wearing a hoodie. Didn't see his face. You say a laptop was stolen? Hmm. I only bothered reporting it to claim on the insurance. Has this lad been arrested then? His body was found in Mincham's boat yard. I know the yard's been in trouble. Common knowledge, is it? Club gossip. And we know the manner of the lad's death has been a source of speculation. Hmm. Last thing we needed was a murder. I'm sure the lad didn't ask to be murdered, love. It's opportunistic breaking. He nicks the laptop, sells it on to finance his habit. She barely looked at that photo. Makes you think she's hiding something. Mm. Oh, not again. Is he following us? I've already cautioned you once about snooping. I'm just enjoying an afternoon drink. Did you rang the police at 10.15? As soon as I got home. Well, why not call them straight away from outside the yard? Had your mobile on you? I suppose I felt safer indoors. You didn't stop you taking pictures. I was gathering evidence. I'm warning you, sunshine. Don't push your luck. I can see you in one of them swanky flats. Oh, yeah. You're going to sort me out with a pay rise? No chance. Doesn't look like a town with a drugs problem, does it? Well, urban regeneration. For those who can afford it. Mm. And that tip of a boat yard is right in the way. Kenny. Mum. We're at Peyton Lynx. We might have found a new lead. Eyewitness puts Caden Lennon down on the beach. Right, give us ten minutes, we'll meet you there. You have to eat that on the way. A holiday maker contacted the police. Her kids were taking lessons at the surf school. Said they'd been offered drugs. Yeah, fits a description for Caden Lennon. But what are you doing standing here? Get someone over to that address. Let's do a sweep with the photo. I'll go talk to David Hasselhoff. A little bird tells me there's been a bit of drug dealing down here. Who's told you that? A parent whose kids were approached by this fella. You need to speak to the woman who made the complaint. She left her kids in your care. I might have seen him. Can't be sure. Beach can get busy this time of year. Mm. 
this surf school. That's your business, is it? Ah, teach a few lessons to pay the way. So where's Ohm? Cut my van parked up top. Saturday night, I hear there was a bit of a party. Ah, uh, we sank a few beers. You see Kayleigh Minsham on the beach? She's always down here with her mates. That's off without incident, did it, this party? As far as I know. What old peace and love, was it? Just a surf crowd letting off steam. If that was all, I've got a class to finish. How'd you get the fat lip? Came off the board in the shallows. Can get pretty rough out there. Don't worry. Go on, then. Go catch some waves. We got a statement from the woman in uh, Washington. She has ID'd Caden Lennon as a lad selling drugs. Yeah, and we know that he's been meeting people outside the arcade. Yeah, Roy Brewer kept a log in his notebook. Yeah, well, that would have been a list of his customers. The Beggar's Casino, Peyton Links, Minchin's Boatyard. Yeah, he certainly gets around. So how does this new intel tie in with his murder? Well, a disgruntled customer, rival dealer. Yeah, and you can't rule out robbery. He would have been carrying cash. Yeah, well, now, the thing is, where's he getting these drugs in the first place? Hmm? Up in Peyton or here in Newcastle? A 17 year old lad has got to be working for someone. Yeah, right. We run that check on Tony Briggs' employees. Uh, another one of a previous registered addict, Declan Price. He's currently on probation with a drug abstinence owner. That's the fella who was mopping up the floor in the gents. Get your coat. All I'm saying, take care of yourself, yeah? All right? So I've got to go. Oh, Declan's been clean for months, Mum. Yeah, well, he missed his last meeting with his probation officer. Mr. Price? It's police. Could you open the door, please? <laughs> Mr. Price? Can you open the door, love? Ah. Uh -huh. DCI stand up. Remember me, love? That was not a good time. Oh, got company, have you? Yeah. My sister, she's visiting with her and a friend. You don't have a sister, Declan. Pair of you. Come on, love. On your feet, yeah. These uh, phones look like they might be burners, ma'am. Ah, oh, right. Well, they might give us uh, some leads. Well, we can take it from here. You can go. Ma'am.
recognize this face? I've never seen him before. That's funny, that. His prints are all over your house. Two grand in cash, hidden under your fish fingers. Now, I think this money is from selling drugs. I keep all the smack I can get my hands on. That stash is for personal use. Oh, well, what about this business card you left in the gents at the beggar's casino? Top gear for sale at knockdown prices. I just do as I'm told. Who by the boss, Tony Briggs? Tony, Tony's got nothing to do with this. Oh, well, then I'll have to assume that you're the brains of this enterprise and that Caden Lennon was working for you. Broken the terms of your parole. Uh, yeah, you're looking at a custodial sentence, uh, Sunshine. I... I don't know. <laughs> a friend introduced us. He said the lad needed a place to stay. So, which friend was this? I can't say. He could have said no. Kieran said they'd hurt us if I went to the police. Who's they? They, they, they never... They never showed the faces. Wrong pattern. They left all the legwork to Kieran. So can you give us any names? People he talked to? All that smack, it makes you forgetful. Well, can you remember where you were on Saturday evening? I was working at the arcade. I didn't get off till 10. See Caden dealing there? We know that's his patch. The last time I saw him was back at the house. And what time was this? Late afternoon. He just got off a train with a load of fresh gear. And how'd he seem? A bit on edge. I went into my room to shoot up. By the time I left for work, uh, there was no sound of him. And you don't recall anyone else dropping by? We might have heard some people talking. A bit of a kick off from the sound of things. So he's with who? <laughs> well, like I said, I was out of it. Well, I, I really need to see a doctor. Want to take a look at this what? intel from the gangs oh, unit caden lennon was running drugs for a county line maintained and protected at any cost perfect profile for gang recruitment care home kid no record yeah much less likely to draw attention to himself yeah well maybe he did draw attention to himself mark maybe that's what got him killed up and down on that train with a pocket full of drugs and we know declan price is a victim of cuckooing vulnerable addict they take over his home and use it as a stash house. Oh, no, here's some intel on a gang called Ferry Boys. Now, are they the ones who set him up in Peyton? Are they the ones pulling the strings here? We've tracked down the signal on that mobile. NE6 postcode. That's a ferry across the state. Get onto the NCA. I want anything they've got on that gang. No. Can you put me in touch with the person? He insisted on coming, he wanted to see him.
while they bury him? Well, I imagine there'll be a public health cremation, love, just as soon as we've released the body. There needs to be a, a stone or something. Proper grave with his name on it. Well, we could perhaps try to locate your dad, see if he I could... don't want him there. All right. He threw my brother down the stairs once. Broke his arm. Your dad? Hi. He was all set to give us a hiding. Caden got between us. He always looked out for me. Tyler, I think he got in with a gang on that estate and he was dealing. Now, these friends of his, they're not the sort of people you want to mess with, love. So maybe he was still looking out for you. I've been working through those burner phones, Mom. Nothing that links us to the ferry cross, but Caden did receive three calls evening he was killed. Phone numbers registered to Kaylee Mincham. Thanks. I think it's time we got a few things straight, don't you? I was always going to hand over those phones. I'm not sure I believe you. If you've been covering for Kaylee Minsham, let me guess your mates with her dad. Me and Gary go back a bit, yeah. Yeah, something else you failed to mention. Well, I didn't think it was relevant. But it was you who found the body in his boatyard. Well, I did everything by the book. That search of Declan Price's place. Did you call Kaylee? Warn her we were coming. Uh. Oh. You were on the phone to someone. I was just uh, checking in with the station. You knew that lass was involved. You better start sharing, Sunshine. Look, Kaylee Mincham's an addict. She's been using for a while now, heroin. Our family's been through enough. So you thought you'd interfere with a murder inquiry? I was just looking out for her. Look, if this goes any further, the professional standards, ugh, I'm looking at a desk job. <sighs> Kaylee Mincham is now a person of interest. And whilst this case is ongoing, you'll have nothing more to do with her. Yes, ma'am. And you'll talk to no one. Not to witnesses or suspects or to any of my team. And you don't talk to me, come to that, unless I address you first. But I... And if I find your actions have compromised this investigation, well, a desk job is going to be the least of your bloody worries. DCI, stand up. Gary's over at the yard. Oh, well, it's Keely we're looking for, love. We need to talk to her in connection with the murder of Caden Lennon. She spoke to him three times on the night he was killed. Drug dealer. We'd better talk outside. Chloe found the stuff in her bag. Suddenly it all made sense. Gary hit the roof, told her to pack her bags. You didn't know where Kitty was getting the drugs? Some lads she got friendly with. I know they went from round here. Oh, that must have been very hard for you. Gary won't even talk about it. The one person that might make her see sense. That night the lad was murdered. Sean rang. PC Turnley told us they'd found a body. I thought for a moment... You thought it might have been Kaylee. When we found out there might have been drugs involved, I asked Sean to keep Kaylee out of it. You took advantage of his better nature, love. Kaylee had nothing to do with this. She's been trying to get clean. 
We'd even talked about her going to rehab. So you've been seeing Kaylee behind your husband's back? She's my child. I couldn't just write her off. We need to talk to Kaylee, love. Find out where she is. That is, if you do want to help her. We own a beach hut. Low Hadley Cliffs. Used to rent it out for the summer. Kaylee? Someone's definitely been dossing down in here. Why, there's more than one person by the look of it. <sighs> so much for her getting clean. It's freezing. <sighs> the lad's only 15 years old. He didn't think someone might be looking for him. He turned up last night. He said he needed somewhere to stay. Oh, so you must know Tyler pretty well, then. Came up with Peyton a few times. Wanted to see his brother. Ah, right. Yes, the dealer. You phoned three times on the day he was murdered. Who was he working for? I didn't care, I didn't ask. Ah, just as long as you were sorted. I do drugs now and then. So what? And you can stop whenever you want to, can you, love? I've heard that one before. So, take me through your movements on Saturday evening. I've already told you. Well, I'd like you to tell me again. I'd ordered some gear for the party. Mm. I'd arranged to meet Caden down at the links. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, what time was this? Straight after work. Must have been around seven. Are you sure Caden didn't go to this party with you? That was the last time I saw him. So where did you spend the rest of the night? Hmm? You told us you didn't go back home. You went straight to work. I got high. I passed out on the beach. I don't remember much of it. And you just woke up in the morning and heard this lad had been murdered. Roy gave us the news when I got to the calf. Let us go then. Oh no, I'll need a statement from you first, pet. But if I find you've been lying to me, I'll have you straight back in here and up on a charge. We've arranged to put him up in temporary accommodation. Good. Oh, you think he might be in danger? Oh, it's better to be safe than sorry. His brother's death might have been gang-related. Now, I suggest you confiscate his mobile and make sure he doesn't talk to anyone. Well, Tyler doesn't know anything. I need to work with the DCI. No, look, just five minutes. You've got two minutes and counting. Better make it quick. I hear you spoke to Nita Johnny. Well, that's no longer your concern, love. No, it's just I was the officer who responded to the break-in and she seemed like she was hiding something. Why do you say that? Well, she was pretty shaken up by the time I got to the club. My car window was smashed in, but she wanted this lad apprehended. A couple of days later, I paid her a follow-up. She said she decided to drop the whole thing. I think maybe someone leaned on her. I 
answered all your questions. Well, I've got a few more, love. This way. The slide who broke into your vehicle. Like I said, I barely saw him. Now, yeah, that's not gonna wash, love. You did recognise Caden Lennon when we showed you that photograph. The question is, why'd you lie to us? We didn't want any more trouble. Well, obstructing a murder inquiry, love is asking for trouble. So why don't you tell us what did happen that night? They came in for a drink. There were four of them. Walked up to the bar like they owned the place. I told them politely it was members only. Asked them to leave. And how did that go down? One of them threatened to mark me. Said I needed to learn some respect. Was that Caden Lennon? Uh, no, this fellow was older. Clearly he was calling the shots. I said I'd call the police if he didn't leave. Finally they got the message. Drove off in a four by four. Did you get a look at the plates? I was just glad to see the back of him. So later that night, this fella sends his lackey back. This is after you've closed. Smashes the car window to make a point. Police came, I gave him a statement. In the cold light of day, I just didn't think it was worth pursuing. Look, I understand why you were having second thoughts, love. I get that, I get it. But then you hear the lad's been murdered and still you don't come forward. I suppose I was scared. We didn't want any more trouble, you said. I mean, that suggests you weren't alone when the lad came back. And I'm guessing it wasn't a lock-in. Aye, I wanted to drop the whole thing. Thought the best of the police weren't involved. I well, told her you'd sort it yourself. What's that supposed to mean? A group of thugs threaten your girlfriend. She's not my girlfriend. And one of them comes back after hours, smashes up her car, and that same lad's found murdered in the boatyard where you work. Well, you can see how it looks. OK. I should have come forward when they found the body. That's the first sensible thing you've said. Me and Nita, I didn't want Gary to know... What, that you were working for the competition? They're opening a franchise for yacht repairs. I give her the heads up on a few of our orders. You gave her everything she needed to finish Gary's business. The yard was already finished. Only Gary couldn't see that. So what do you get out of it? Hmm? Apart from the obvious. She's promised us a job when we're up and running. I have me future to think about. Yeah, well, I hope it was worth it, love. I really do. We need an ANPR check to find that four before. In fact, any vehicle in the area the night of that break-in. We've got NCA Intel on this gang of ferry boys. They're in the frame for a few recent muggings, smash and grabs, stolen bones. Yeah, well, we're looking for the kingpins, not kids on bikes. Recently implicated in an acid attack. Rival gang member, it's their method of dealing with any competition. An acid attack? I think we need another chat with Tony Briggs. to look like harassment. You didn't decide to give up drug dealing, love. You were forced out by rival dealers, Newcastle gang who'd set up a county line. You think I'd feel threatened by a gang of kids? Oh, I think it was more than threats, love, by the look of them scars on your arm. Check up on his hospital records, see what they can tell us. Back in my day, the dealers had standards. You'd look after your clients, there was loyalty. Oh, proper gents. I'll bet. These inner-city dealers, they'd kill you in a heartbeat to protect their racket. There's too much money at stake. Make a complaint. We can have whoever did this arrested. Next time, it'll be the fierce. Declan Price's house. 
You must have known they'd moved in there. I knew he was scared. He'd seen too many faces. Now, if you'd been attacked, you'd be looking for payback, wouldn't you? Name Caden Lennon ring any bells. And there I was thinking you were concerned about my well-being. Put you in the frame for his murder. I was working here on Saturday night. With the old mate, Declan. He turned up to work. He wasn't well. Said he couldn't take much more of Caden's bullying. I sent him home early. No use to anybody. Respiratory failure as a result of opioid ingestion, chronic emphysema from long-term drug abuse. Uh, he would have been predisposed. It was only a matter of time. So an accidental overdose? Well, it certainly looked like it until I did some more tests. The heroin was cut with fentanyl, an opioid 75 times stronger than morphine. I sent a sample down to the lab for chromatographic analysis and it would have been a lethal dose. So whoever supplied this heroin would have known that it would kill him? This was murder. Declan Price's death is now being treated as murder. A lethal batch of dirty heroin. So we're ruling out Declan as Caden Lennon's killer? <sighs> Declan Price didn't kill that lad. Though we might have known who did. Pushed him too hard. Another needless death. If we are to assume that these two murders are connected, would it put Alan White in the clear? Not necessarily. He keeps coming back to this gang. They threatened Ajani, assaulted Tony Briggs. So did Caden Lennon do something to make him turn on him? I ran a routine search on Declan Price's finances, ma'am. Something doesn't add up. Large amounts of cash have passed through his bank account, regular deposits and withdrawals. There's a few thousand a week for a fellow on benefits. A withdrawal was made in Peyton this morning, £500 with his cash point card. Well, that would have been a walking miracle. They've sent me footage from the ATM camera. Let's have a look. Freeze it. Kaylee Minchum. Declan Price's bank card found in your pocket. Care to explain? I need to pay for a deal. Asked us to get some cash out. Didn't know you were friends. And now you do. He give you his pin number, did he? You can ask him yourself if you don't believe us. Ah, that might prove tricky, love. Because Declan was found murdered last night. Needle in his arm, someone had spiked his heroin. And then, this morning, you are caught on camera stealing 500 quid from a dead man's account. It wasn't even his money. Oh, I'm inclined to believe you there, pet. Cos someone else was using Declan's bank account to hide drugs money. I swear... I had nothing to do with this. No. Well, I think it was you set Caden up in Peyton. It was you introduced him to Declan, got him into his house because you knew Declan was an easy target. I never thought they'd hurt him. No. Well, both those people are now dead, love. And sooner or later, you're going to be surplus to requirements. And what's going to happen then, eh? Just give us the name of whoever is running this county line. Who's pulling the strings? They're the ones we're after. I can't. I can't. We talked to several witnesses who attended that party. And no one can remember seeing you after 10 p.m. that evening. I told you, I passed out on the beach. Well, I don't believe no, I you. did, I swear. I woke up on Sunday morning in Lena Della's camper van. I found a line on the beach of the party. 
off her face as usual. Well, I couldn't just leave her there. Nothing happened. Did you know Caden Lennon supplied her heroin? I told her he was bad news. Not that she took any notice. So you lied when you said you didn't know him? I didn't want to drop Kaylee in it. Sounds like you've got a soft spot. She had everything going for her. And she's just thrown her life away. You clock Kaylee on the beach with Caden. She's desperate for a fix, and he's the lad supplying her with drugs. So what happened? You get between them. I warned him off. That's all. Got into a fight with a look at that lip. And you told us she'd been drinking. OK, so he took a pop at his, threw a punch and ran. Oh, what, and you went after him, did you? Hmm? Decide to teach him a lesson. You seriously think I killed him? I think we should finish this back at the station. Come on, son. We've arrested Lena Della for murder. We know about the fight on the beach. Lee didn't kill anyone. He hasn't got it in him. Well, unless you can tell me who did. Look, this couldn't care less act is not going to wash, love. You're out of your depth, and you know it. This fella doesn't need protecting. He doesn't deserve protecting. He shows up in pain when he feels like it. Likes to surprise as he sees. And did he show up in Peyton last night? Went for a drive, that's all. Did he buy you that chain? So what if he did? Kaylee, I'm going to need a name. Result. We're looking for a fella called Nathaniel Halpin, H-A-L-P-I-N. His friends call him Nat. He's the leader of this gang, and by all accounts, he's a piece of work. Now, Kayleigh Minchin can place him in Peyton at the time of both murders. Tom, here you are. He's got previous ABH and possession of a knife 18 months ago. We've got him. Kenny, I'll need an address. Then get on to DVLA. I'm guessing he drives a 4 before. Well. Anyone wants me, I'll be with Dave Miller. Let's see if we can jog his memory. Yeah, I know him. Kicked him out of the centre for carrying a weapon. Nat knows he's not welcome. So he doesn't live on this estate? Not anymore. Here he's got a plush pad in Jesmond. Yeah? Well, what about his gang, the Ferry Boys? Look, if anyone around here knew I was talking to the police... Listen, Nat Halpin is a prime suspect in Caden's murder. Coerced him into pushing drugs. And we know the sources from this estate. I have spent five years looking out for these kids. I would have done something about it. Yeah, well, maybe you still can, love. Whatever you may think about the police, I want this fella locked up before he finds another lad to take Caden's place. Now, do you want that on your conscience? One of his crew. Serves up from the flat. Which flat? Back at the tower block. Number.
Still warm. <sighs> Ma'am, uh, we're in Jasmine. Not helping. Appears to have gone to ground, ma'am. <sighs> ma'am, forensics are testing the drugs we found at the flat for a chemical signature. Yeah, well, we need a match to this statch seized in Peyton. Mm -hmm. Some evidence to tie him to these murders. Oh, come on, Jack. Find us something, anything we can work with. At least we've closed down their supply line. We can only start up somewhere else, find some other kids to exploit. What? Uh, that search we ran on Kayleigh Minchin's mobile. Well, there's nothing on it, was there? Yeah, well, we got access to her social media accounts. Uh, you might want to take a look at these selfies we found in her direct messages. I think that's what you call bragging rights. You weren't headed up to Peyton to see your brother. He was dropping off drugs for this county line. Tyler. I've got nothing to say to you. Oh, get that attitude from Nat helping, did you? The fella you were working for got previous for carrying a knife. Now, had your brother fallen out with him? Nat was family. He's blood. Nat Halpin isn't family, whatever promises he might have made you. Now then, we know that he was up in Peyton the night that Caden died, and I think he went up there to kill him. I told you, I don't know anything. Tyler, you're the one person your brother would have confided in. <laughs> do you know what they do to a grant? Oh, well, if you're worried about reprisals, now we'll take care of you. Witness protection? Aye. I'd rather take me chances. Uh, she'll be in court first thing in the morning. Then what? Uh, well, I imagine she'll be bailed pending charges. Mr. Minchin, your daughter can come back from this, but she will need your support. She comes home with us, Gary. Either that or we'll leave him without you. Cars out front. Kitty! Kitty, wait! Sorry. Hey, Tyler. I just wish you'd called me, or at least called for backup. Oh, he'd have been long gone before any of you lot turned up. This is a warning. Oh, it's just someone being cocky, thinking they can run rings around us. Uh, Mum, the visitor. So they only speak to you. I know where you can find him. Thank <laughs> you.
If you do not mention one question, something you later align in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. He can't hurt you, love. He'll know it was me, though. Us too hard. Once you go in country, you're on call 24 7. Caden started to smoke a bit of crack. To stay awake, he said. I told him he was asking for trouble. Drugs must have messed with his head. All this cash we were making. Kidden was vexed we weren't seeing any of it. And that finds out the money's short. Tells us Kidden been taxing off him. So stealing off the wrong man. A couple of days after they found his body, Nat calls us up and said, Kidden had got what was coming to him and had taken on my brother's debt. And we'd have to work harder to pay it off. Okay, son. Okay. We run a trace on your vehicle. Places you in Peyton three days ago. Yeah, I went up there to visit my girlfriend. Ah, oh, Kayleigh Minchum. Yeah. Oh, vulnerable lass, who you took advantage of. Oh, you can add sexual grooming to his list of offences. She's a junkie. Nothing she says would ever stand up in court. No, I think you went up to Peyton to see Declan Price, another vulnerable adult who you've threatened. Well, I've never seen him before. No. You supplied him with two grams of heroin laced with a lethal amount of fentanyl. Which was in your flat on the Ferry Cross estate. Well, I haven't been back there for a while. I don't like the neighbourhood. Ah, you favour the plush pad in Jesmond, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've searched it, and we've found pricey watches and designer clothing, and some of the items, well, they're still in a wrapper. And we're satisfied that the money used to buy those items was earned through dealing drugs. Mm. You can add that to the list. <laughs> You've got nothing to tie me to any of this. We've also got a witness who said they were working for you under duress, and based on that statement, you're also under arrest on a charge of trafficking a minor. Trafficking? Mm. Well, we get you on drugs. <laughs> I mean, that's almost a badge of honour, isn't it? <laughs> but trafficking kids, oh, that doesn't go down too well in prison. Oh. Now, Caden Lennon was working for you, running drugs to Peyton. We also know he was stealing from you, taxing off money from your drug deals, so he needed teaching a lesson, didn't he? Now, our forensics team, they found traces of Caden's blood in your vehicle. And that's all we need to charge you with his murder. So. If there's anything you'd like to add? No? No comment. I'd 
say you'd get 25 years, which is a small price to pay for all those lives you've ruined. Call when we got to the safe house. All right, love, come on, we'll give you a lift home. No, he's going to be fine, love. They'll look after him. Oh, I thought you might want your photo back. Here. Well, I remember when they first arrived here, a pair of lost souls, they just lost their mum. Tyler wouldn't leave Caden's side. It took him months before he'd trust anyone. Ah, well, he'd been through a lot. They both had. Tyler had these terrible meltdowns. All that pent-up anger inside him. Even pushed his brother down them stairs once. Broke his arm in two places. Christine? Does Tyler own a dark padded jacket? Yeah, he lives in it. We're still stuck in town, Mum. Traffic's pretty heavy. Uh, shut up, just listen to me. I need you to turn the car around and come back to the station. Change of plan. Boss has requested we head back to base. OK, right on. No, you don't. We've done a search of the immediate area, man. No sign. We'll put out a call to control. Put out a description. He may be a threat now. He knows we're onto him. We'll do, man. He was out of the car before I could catch him. Uh, none of us saw this coming, Jack. Now I need you to get back to the station. I'm fine. That man. nose might be broken. Needs looking at. Where's a 15-year-old going to hide? Caden said he wanted to stay here. Save up some money, buy us a place, view of the sea. Just like his man, eh? I tried to warn him. Told him we should just disappear. That why you argued on the day he died, when you were at Declan's house. He said he was too tired to run. Tired of starting over. Not helping. 
drove you to that boatyard and took you home afterwards. Your brother's blood all over your clothes. He said I needed to prove I was one of them. He even put the blade in me hand. Sent a lad to do his dirty work. He was hiding in one of the boats. So scared he was shaking. I took him in my arms. He let me hold him. I told him not to worry, that it'll all be okay. His look of surprise as I pulled out a knife. The one person who always protected you. I didn't have a choice. You killed your own brother to prove you were a man. I was the care kid everyone picked on. A few steps behind him, getting in his way. The butt of all the jokes. The little brother Caden was forced to look after. Tell us, who's the man now, eh? Ten grand a week we were clearing. Base, white, meth, weed, anything. I can get you anything to get high. Yeah. Well, that doesn't make you a man, love. Turning your back on those thugs would have made you a man. So on your feet. It got to you this one, didn't it? What? Well, it didn't get to you. Two lads sold the promise of a better life. What chance did they have, eh? Well, the tow rabbit who sold it to them, he won't be trading for the foreseeable. Nah, there'll be plenty more of them lining up to take his place. We didn't even scratch the surface of the problem. Right, I'm off. Should you be driving that? Hey, Garage said it's as good as new. Oof. Hardly. I heard that. Yeah. This old thing. It's gonna last forever. And the drama continues when we're back in Northumberland next Sunday night at 8 for more Vera. Will Sam risk everything as she delves further into insider trading? Sheridan Smith stars in you cleaning up Wednesday night at 9. And will Adam finally act his age? And will Jen reveal her shock diagnosis, trials and tribulations tomorrow night at 9 with new cold feet? Next, though, the ITV News. <laughs>